How's everyone doing? This is Gary St. Fleur from Save Scranton. And I want to talk about a recent op-ed that was made from our site about Scranton being the <clears throat> unhappiest city in America. Um, a company with it was a premiere of a documentary that basically explored the same thing. They wanted to know why exactly <laughs> Scranton was rated the unhappiest city in America. What are the components and main features that contribute to this? And also, what can be done? I think. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, but first, let's talk about Scranton. A lot of people who are hearing this who are not from the area, such as myself, are probably interested as, you know, what exactly is Scranton and what it what is it like to live in Scranton? Well, I'm originally from New York City. I moved here about a couple of months, like six months, seven months ago in August. And I'm going to tell you my immediate impressions. The first thing that I noticed when I came to Scranton was that the buildings look pristine. And by buildings, I mean the government buildings. The municipal building, the courthouse buildings, Lackawanna County Courthouse the federal buildings, all the government-owned buildings are on point. Um, the businesses, though, boarded up. Like, <laughs> when I went to the Steamtown Mall, it looked like a ghost town. There were shops after shops after shops closed. And the highlight of the city is to pathetically claim that, oh, no, you know, shops are coming to the area. And that's supposed to be jobs. So they actually talk, talked low-income or retail jobs as a good thing like that's going to revitalize the area because now you have jobs where people can work for minimum wage at concession stands um that's pathetic and, and deplorable but in this city that's the a good thing that's how bad it is um the houses are blighted falling in value like most um homeowners will tell you that they don't want to even make improvements to their homes because it's just not worth it the property taxes yes in Scranton, the property taxes are so high, especially considering the neighboring um, towns and, 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 and locations, that people not only want to move, but they can't because the property taxes are so high, the housing values are so low, that they can't sell their homes because nobody wants them. Nobody's sane, of course. And that's, the, that's just the tip of the iceberg dilemma in Scranton. Oh, but wait, there's more. So the, the, let's, let's talk about the documentary. So the documentary, um, a film crew came to Scranton. I, I would like to say a lot more film crews need to come to Scranton. If you want a great story, come to Scranton and do research on the place. It's amazing. Like what you hear from the locals, what you hear from the politicians, what you hear from the business owners and the homeowners will make for almost a fictional movie because that's how ridiculous and insane it is. It's almost so insane that in fact, no, it's not almost. It is, it is, it is so crazy that when I speak to people outside of the area, they immediately assume that I'm exaggerating about how bad it is. They say, Gary, it can't possibly be that bad. You say corruption. Come on. Every place has corruption. The corruption can't be that bad. It can't be on every level. I'm like, yes, on every single level. Like, no, yes. But again, we'll get to that. So let's talk about the documentary. All right, in this documentary, which um, I'll put a link below in this podcast, um, they talk about three major features that result in Scranton being very unhappy and depressed and melancholy. Um, these three factors, according to the documentary, were education, economics, and alcoholism. So let's talk about these things. So according to them, the education in the area is not, you know, as well thought out or really, really readily available for everyone. Or, I mean, I mean, to be honest, I'm not even sure what they mean because there's like 50,000 students in this area. You have University of Scranton, you have Marywood, and you have Lackawanna College. You have many colleges over here. Um, are a lot of people going to college in this area? I wouldn't think so. But that's a different, that's not because of the education per se, that's because of the other factors and the pressures involved, such as not being able to have jobs that pay decent salaries, such as a nepotism that 
occurs in this place when only the politically connected are allowed are are able to get good jobs because the government and the political machine behind it controls nearly everything. That is probably so it doesn't even matter if you have an education. You can have an education but you're not going to get a decent job without have being connected with the right people. It's a complete medieval type of situation where people who work in the government or are affiliated with people who work in the government live like princes, queens, and dukes and princesses, while the rest of the residents of Scranton are peasants who just toil and pay for the kingdom of Scranton to subsist and continue exploiting the pet, the, 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 the serfs. Now, in terms of the economy, again, the economy is very bad in this area and it and a lot of people will say that it has to do with the coal mining industry leaving and that happened almost what 100 years ago what 70 years ago um coal mining left a long time ago and they're still recovering from that which only means that the leadership and the vision and the people in charge are very incompetent like within all the trends that have occurred in the past 70 years. We're talking about computers. We're talking about manufacturing, airplane, infrastructure, communications, cell phones, telecommunications, um, um, different engineering and, and, and manufacturing capabilities. All these things have transpired in the past 70 years. Like, um, if you just take 30 years, we went from our economy that was based on a mixture of manufacturing, you know, consumer staples and whatnot, to almost a complete service-dominated industry where we have a lot of our information on cloud computing. Scranton has done none of this. Scranton lives in the Stone Age because the people in charge do not want to modernize Scranton. Why not? Well, if you modernize Scranton, you're going to allow people with more education who are middle class who are going to probably ask questions. And they don't want people asking questions in Scranton. Yes, yeah, Scranton is like one of these mystic river type of places where they don't like outsiders around here because they might prod too much and ask questions. And God forbid they have means and start to expose them to them, expose what's going on in Scranton to the media. Oh, they definitely don't want that, such as what yours truly is doing. So what exactly is wrong with the economy in Scranton today? Um, the Scranton Chamber of Commerce has it as its policy to make sure that Good businesses, strong businesses, businesses that provide salaries with benefits and a career track do not step foot in the city. And of course, they probably wouldn't want to, given the exorbitant taxes and excessive fees that's going to be levied on them as soon as they step foot in Scranton. So they basically keep businesses away. They don't want businesses here. They want to keep the population depressed and downtrodden. They want a whole bunch of old people here who can't move, who's going to take their pill and take their medicine with no complaint. That is their plan. And, and they've been very effective at it, uh, uh, unfortunately, to the point where the city is crumbling. It's in ruins. It's, it's, it's a deplorable, sad, pathetic, dejected place. But that is not to say that it can improve. It can definitely improve. I mean, you can't do any worse than you already have done. So there's only like, you can go up from here <laughs> if you were to make improvements. Um, but the last thing again, the documentary said the last thing is alcoholism, um, which is definitely true. But it's not just alcoholism. They ne neglected to mention the drugs, the excessive drug use, heroin and weed. But who cares about weed, right? Heroin in particular. And yes, alcoholism is a problem in this area. Obviously, when you have a uh, government and the political machine and the criminal enterprise behind it who are keeping the people from getting a jobs, who are using coercive and intimidating fa um, um, actions to silence people, who steal homes um, regularly from people by just going up to them and putting a notice and condemning them and taking people's home and seizing them, forcing people to go to inspectors that work for the city in order to get the condemned notice removed. It's complete travesty and a miscarriage of justice. And they notice these immoral people and these evildoers who are in control, who are unconscionable and immoral to the, to the point of where I would like, I, I never considered, you know, people to be like really 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 bad until i came here like you always often think that people are just misguided like yeah they just, they were raised differently they don't know better the people in charge here no they're just bad people they just truly like parents raised them wrong dad should have been around <laughs> or mom should have told them no who knows bunch of sociopath or, or psychopaths whatever you want to say 
And this is their, their handiwork. The city as it is now is a handiwork. You have 38% of the population that's on Social Security. 20% of the population are living in poverty. 7% are in unemployment. All told, two-thirds of the population are in poverty. But this is not the story that you hear often coming out of Scranton because they don't want you to know the story. They don't want you to know that the city is ran by a political machine. They don't want you to know that criminal enterprises are largely in control of the entire area. What they want you to believe is that they're just down on their luck, you know. Oh man, you know, jobs are being shipped to China. It has nothing to do with incompetence, corruption, nepotism, and malfeasance. But that's the truth. And that's what I really want to get into. I really want to talk about the fact that the documentary documentary neglected the most salient and important part of what's wrong with Scranton. There's only one thing that's really wrong with Scranton. And it's not the economy. It's not the alcoholism. And it's not the education. I mean, you can get education online through massive open online courses. EDX. Yale Open Course. And things like that. What's wrong with Scranton is corruption. A cesspool of venomous vipers, snakes, who control the city for their own personal agenda at the expense of everything else. We're talking about the expense of the people who live in Scranton, the expense of the state of Pennsylvania, and the state and the expense of greater America because they just don't care. They don't care about the law. They will break the law. Um, they will threaten people. They will even harm people like, like the mob because they're criminals. Heartless bastards. And they have ruined this city. So what do I mean by that in real terms? Okay. Listen carefully. Scranton owes upwards of $400 million in debt. How can this population of 76,000, where most of the people are poor, manage to rack up this amount of debt? Well, the government gives government employees Cadillac retirement benefits, where they get full coverage for health, full coverage for retirement. They don't pay into Social Security. So if you work in the private sector, they're not even contributing. And they're, they're great. But in addition to that, they didn't even pay into the pensions. So the pensions are underfunded by 80% and about to go bankrupt in a year. Now, they almost went bankrupt in 2013 until they got some uh, ama- uh, emergency loan from some enterprise. And the fact is, nobody really knows where they get their money to borrow to run their operations because no sane company would do it because their credit rating is below junk. But they somehow managed to get it anyway. Chances are there's some intrigue and questionable things going on with that also. But they plan to sell the, the sewer authority, which is a public asset. Of course, it's going to be sold to one of their buddies. That's to be assumed. They're going to lease out the car garage. Another public asset going to be leased out to a, a private corporation to help the city. No, to help the people in the government and their friends and their buddies and their cronies. How will this help the city? How will this make the city economically viable, sustainable, produce jobs? It won't. There is no intent to do this. The intent is to keep people downtrodden, just have a minimal existence, and keep the status quo going. Now, if people want to wonder, and I know they do, because if you look at the selection cycle, there's a lot of ideas and a lot of accusations being hurled on both sides, whether, you, whether you're on the right or whether you're on the left. <clears throat> and what's being said is the same thing. People are concerned about the economy. People are concerned about jobs. People are concerned about the future of America. The reality is that places like Scranton are the problem with America. Governments like the government of Scranton, it's what's the problem with America. These institutions provide no value to our society. In fact, they provide the inversion of value. They're a liability. 
They're like a parasitic entity that sucks the lifeblood out of an area and offers nothing in return. Truly, what has the local government of Scranton done to even justify its existence? Why should the people in Scranton pay their taxes? For what? So the cops can have pristine vehicles and a brand new headquarters? So that the fire department, where 58% of the retirees are in disability, because collecting checks, can have a new fire truck? So they can say that we're not as bad as the next township over? So their, their, their basis for performance is to say we're not the worst? What happened to American values that sought to be the best? That sought to not just be better than the worst, like some penultimate prize, but to be number one. What happened to innovation? To challenging frontiers, pioneering ideas, innovation. What we don't see, what we see, what we don't see in America is a push towards these things. Jobs get shipped to China, we create new jobs. Why not? There's $2.5 trillion dollars. And our banks right now, that's not being loaned out. Why? I mean, think about if you're a bank and you see things like Scranton going on. Do you want to loan money out to businesses just for regulations, licensing fees, and other bottlenecking type of um, policies will be employed to rob businesses and small businesses of their earnings so that they cannot be profitable, they cannot be viable? Because these local governments like Scranton basically are thieves. And their, their, their motto is take as much as you can before the ship sinks. What's the point? What would be the point of even starting a business in Scranton? Just to, to pay all the wage fees, garbage fees, water fees, property taxes, and a commuter tax, and income tax, just to be in a city that's dying? Like, Can you imagine? Like, there's no way that any other institution in our society can justify something like this besides a local government. And this is and the primary reason is why. The primary reason why is number one, not many people pay attention are paying attention outside the area. And that's what they got going for them. They're like, yes, we have we're situated in Scranton. No one cares about Scranton, supposedly. We can get away with what we want. We'll control the local media. We'll threaten the local citizens to silence. We've been doing this for years. We got the playbook. We're experts at theft. So we're going to do this. But lo and behold, you know, someone like Safe Scranton comes around and starts poking holes. And all of a sudden, they're, 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 they're bent out of shape about it. You know, we receive threats. We receive, you know, menacing messages. You know, they made, it, they made attempts. Sure. Um, but the fact of the matter is, Save Scranton is only just one institution or one organization. Thousands upon thousands have read our blogs, have heard our podcasts, and are going to see our videos when they're coming. They're coming soon. So it's, it's only a matter of time before more people start to look into the Scranton situation and look to see what's going on in these local governments. Because it always starts from the bottom up. If there's a problem with our country, the, 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 the smallest variables culminate into the issues of our society. When we have regions like Scranton or the Northeast and Pennsylvania area where there's a culture of corruption, why would you think that it's not going to affect our economy and our ability to get jobs? You basically have people being strangled and, 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 and obstacles being placed upon them Instead of having income, disposable income to spend, which drives consumption and drives the economy, they're paying taxes and fees to a government institution so that the employees can line their pockets. God, can you imagine like what it must be for our soldiers and veterans who believe in the ideas of liberty, justice, equality, just to find out that you have governments that are basically ran by the mob who don't do anything for our society besides make it worse. Literally, I honestly believe that one of the best things that could ever happen in Scranton is for the local government to just pack up and just leave. Like, just shut down, give all the money back to the people, let the people do what they want. I, I, I've always had in mind that I trust the American people far more than I trust politicians and people in government. Um, 
I think that American people would be just fine. I think the Scrantonians would be fine if they had the money in their possession. Instead of trying to pay off a pension that the people of Scranton had, did not create or did not sign for, or did not do anything, let the government just pack up and leave. Like, we don't want your service anymore. Like, like, like a cell phone. Now, like, if I have a cell phone and the reception is bad, it drops calls, text is not coming, emails not coming, I'm going to get a different plan. I'm going to I'm going to go to a different company. I'm going to say thank you but no thank you and move on. But problem is that when you have a government, it's like your services are horrible, but there's no other option. And it always should be an option. Like we should like like seriously, it would be great if Scrag could sign up and say, "Ah, no, I'm good. I'm good. I don't want your services. They're horrible anyway. Keep them to yourself." Of course they don't want that. They don't. They do not want that. Like, if the people of Scranton and there's seventy six thousand of them decided, if a good number, like ten percent, decided, hey, you know what? We're not paying our taxes. We're not doing it. We're not going to do it. I know you're going to threaten to take my house and blah blah blah. You don't have enough officers. Only one hundred and forty of you guys. Let's do this. I want to see you do it, and I want to go cam this. We're going to sensationalize this. Put it on Twitter. Put it on Instagram. Let the world see what is going on in Scranton. And that, and this is what we're going to do. So Save Scranton primarily has an interest and focus on making sure that the nation knows what goes on in places like this. This is like seeing, you know, like how um, in, the, in the 90s and the early 2000s when there was an Iraq war or Desert Storm, how CNN and these cable outlets changed the dynamics of warfare by allowing journalists on the field and giving us shot-by-shot play and commentary on a theater of war. Well, I think that it would be very interesting for Safe Scranton to do something similar with corruption and the revolution that's transpiring here. And when I say revolution, I'm not talking in the sense of just you know going crazy and having protests and rioting, which is deserved, by the way. Like If what happened to Ferguson and Baltimore happened to Scranton, I could not be upset about it. The local government deserves it. They deserve it. They deserve to be afraid for their lives. That's that's like that, that's justified because a lot of people in Scranton are afraid for their lives. And I believe in equality. You know, it's only fair. You know, tit for tat. Um, but when I say revolution, I mean that the people of Scranton they can only take so much. You know, pressure bust pipes. It's only so much that the people will take before they get completely fed up. And I'm here to make sure that they get completely fed up. That if they don't know, oh. They do know now. And if they're not completely irate and completely mad with the injustice, with the corruption, with the deplorable, disingenuous, repugnant behavior of these so-called government officials and these so-called government employees, they will be. We guarantee this. So I want to thank everyone for listening. Um, keep tuning in. Soon we'll be having um, video. I'm going to start launching, I don't know what you call it, what, Snapchats <laughs> or um, video commentaries. And I won't stay tuned, man. See what's going on in Scranton. See what it is to live in Scranton. The nonsense the local government does. You know, the testimonies of the local people. And hopefully we'll, 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 we'll make national headlines. When people, when Scranton goes bankrupt, it won't be a mystery. It won't catch America off guard. And they be like, what happened? They'll, they'll, have a, they'll come to say Scranton and see the exact commentary on exactly what happened. Why the city went bankrupt. Why it has no economic viability while the current government is in place. And, and, and as I said before, what's very odd about the situation is that it doesn't have to be this way. The city could be viable. You know, you have five major highways. Within two hours, 90 million Americans. You can have manufacturing. You can have shipping. You can invite businesses to come in because the city is one hour away from New York City and Jersey and Philadelphia. The topography favors, you know, a commercial hub and create some spectacles and, and, and attractions, have some tourism, you know, great rolling hills and everything like that. You know, that's that's just called vision and, and ideas right there. And they can de- definitely steal them. Of course, they won't steal them because being innovative and modernizing and moving forward is something they do not want to do. So despite me saying this, I doubt that this will be any talking point for Mayor Cartwright, 
who I call the, you know, Sir Deficit or the absentee mayor because this guy is never around. But of course, he's not supposed to do that. It's not his job. His job is to collect the paycheck, which, of course, we pay for as taxpayers and do absolutely nothing except make the situation worse because he's a crony and he's bought in by the unions. Everyone knows this. Even the city councilman told me this himself. So it's not a mystery. Let's have good government. Let's have real government. Let's have people participate. Let's get inspired. People keep talking about taking their country back. And I know a lot of people are upset with what's going on in America. But the truth of the matter is, we take our country back by our own individual actions. This is what the forefathers promoted. This is what's in our constitution. This is the way our society and our country is structured. The most important person in this country is not the person who sits in the White House. It's the individual American. It's the person who wakes up every day, puts on their clothes, goes to work, and comes home. There are the driving force of our entire society. Because fundamentally, government doesn't have money. All the money that it has comes from us. We pay for it. I hope everyone enjoyed this. Thank you for listening. If you have any comments, please do not hesitate to contact us. Um, there'll be more on the way. And as I said, we're currently working on doing some more video, doing some video production. You know, people like video. It's only fair that we give them some actual presentation images of the offensive boondoggle <laughs> that is the Scranton government. Um, have a great day and thank you for listening. Goodbye.